kind of with eight or 12 bars sticking up. Uh, and it's just the body weight of the people heaving at the capstan that's going to get this job done. The more they are pushing at exactly the same time with their feet, the greater the amount of effort mm -hmm. delivered to the task. So that, you know, that is the march for the song like that. For Alabama John Cherokee, I was demonstrating where the pulls come. Again, if you're singing the chorus exactly together and pulling exactly at the same time, uh, the other part of the description that uh, Craig has kind of evolved about this and our experience sailing with Charles W. Morgan in 2014, uh, the crew that was on there were tall ship sailors from all over the place. But what they're used to doing is hand over hand pulling up a, a sail. Now, they would have 20 people on the halyard, so it didn't take too much for them to be able to do that. And then they get down to the end and they'd say, two, six, heave, which drives me right up the wall. <laughs> because real sailors would not use the word heave when they're pulling. <laughs> and so the concoction of two, six, heave, supposedly coming out of two men pulling on lines to pull a gun out of the gun port, just didn't make, doesn't make any sense. <laughs> um, so anyway, the, we would watch them do this. And then I was seeing Alabama John Cherokee at the Halyard. And again, this crew wasn't really that familiar with it, but we still got to sail up. If, if you put a watch on it, it would have been the same amount of time. <laughs> and when you really start to do this job of pulling at the Halyard, what you're doing, instead of sliding this yard up, the mass, you're jumping it mm. every time. You, and, and the longer that pull is, the farther up that jump goes, the faster the job goes. So uh, we really, at some point, we're going to do a demonstration uh, to really time it out on the Morgan and see if we can prove this point. Craig <laughs> proved it pretty well in filming himself doing uh, uh, shallow ground or something at the how you in his talk this last year. But um, so you have marching around the capstan, you have hauling on lines, so you either have two poles in a double pull halyard chain, or when you get to the point where you need all of the effort delivered at once, because when you're pulling and then reaching to pull again, you actually don't get everything into both of those poles. Uh, so then you have a short drag shanty where you have plenty of time to think and just sing. Well, when I was a little boy, so my mother told me, way all the way, will power away, Joe! And you get a whole lot of effort on that last pull. Um, so that's a short drag shanty. Hand over hand, uh, let's see, haul on the bowling. Somebody mentioned haul on the bowling. Haul on the bowling, kitty comes from Liverpool. Haul on the bowling, the bowling, haul on the bowling, Liverpool's at packet school. Haul on the bowling, the bowling, haul. In that case, you're probably getting in the slack of the sheet, uh, the main sheet, or the fore sheet for the, for the big force of the, the sheet that's coming in through a shiv on the, on the bulwarks. Uh, but anything, uh, I would use that for uh, four and a half gear when you're actually hauling, hauling up a staysail uh, or for staysail a jib or something like that. Um, and then you have the pumps, where you're working from your ankles over your head on a small jiggy jig pump, where you're working halfway up and halfway down with the big windlass that's on the morning. And for that, you end up with a little, you know, a conversion of a lot of capstan shanties can work for this, but there are other shanties that really suit themselves for it. So, uh, let's see. Uh, Kick up girls and got no combs. Away, away. They comb their hair with codfish combs. Away, away. Well, when you get to the downtown pump, 
Now that, that was the Jimmy the Jeep pump. 1870s, you got a, a wheel, you got a handle, you got a, an ice spliced line so you can pull and heave at the same time. So you get two men with their hands on this bar going, going around down the handle. And you get other men hauling when it's down there, you pull this way, and up there, you pull that way. And you have heave and haul in the same chorus. Mm -hmm. Where the Cape Cod girls ain't got no coals. Heave away, haul away. They comb their hair with codfish bones, and we're bound the way for a stray. into being and there's gold in Australia. So these songs are all taking you to Australia with the Heaton Hall Chorus. Kind of interesting that they show up in that orientation. All right, let's see, where was I going after that? Um, oh, the men Heaton. Shame, we, we got distracted there. There might be a few people in the room who don't know what men Heaton is our. Oh, is our. <laughs> men Heaton are a little fish that grow to be about that long. They're full of bones. They're full of fats. They're called fat back or bony fish or bunker or a bunch of other things. And uh, they're excellent for uh, steaming and pressing to get the oil out of them. Anybody take fish oil supplements? You're probably taking menhaden. Uh, that has been one of the main things they've been used for for a long time. And then when you get done getting the oil out of them, you turn them into fertilizer. And the factories that made these things didn't smell too good, so they burned down on a regular basis. <laughs> uh, but the labor force that was doing this, at least in the uh, Chesapeake and, and down into the Gulf and such, were black men. And so they were singing their versions of the blues. And, and various, actually, a whole bunch of different songs came into this repertoire. The archetypal one is won't you, oh, by the way, you've got nine guys in this boat that's about 40 feet long. You've got nine guys in another one. You've laid out this big net around a school of fish that, I mean, that would be easily twice the size of this room in, in a big circle of this net. And you finally get the edges of the net together and you drop a 500 or 1,000 pound tom weight to purse the bottom of the net. Wow. The fish are in the net now. And actually, at this point, a, a school of fish is powerful enough that they can run at the net and run right through it. So you got to get them, you got to get them under control, get the slack net out. Interesting that um, Matthew Byrne, in, in a song that was written by his uncle, that he, his grand uncle, I guess, that he never met, about fishing in Newfoundland, talks about the dogfish running. And they hope that the dogfish don't run because they'll run right through the net. Um, so there, that correlation just came to me. Uh, but so here these guys would be standing up the nets all around the fish, and they got to bring in, so they get their knees against the gunwale, and they reach out and just pull in the slack net, drop it down below their knees, and hold it in place. So the guys that came, first the Manhattan shannon from Beaufort, North Carolina, all bow-legged, <laughs> and when they rolled up their sleeves, you could see broken veins in their forearms from the strain of the slack. Um, but they would sing standing up and then they'd do the work. Won't you help me to raise them, boys? Oh, honey. Oh, 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 you gotta walk that net. I don't see anybody doing any work here. <laughs> when you reach over there, you're talking to each other, giving each other a hard time. <laughs> That's called jabber. <laughs> Won't you help me to raise them, boys? Oh, 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 oh honey. Won't you help me to raise them, boys? See her when the sun goes down. No, nobody got anything to say to each other here. <laughs> I got a long, tall. Here's another problem. I got a long, tall yellow gal. Yeah. Oh, well, let's see. Oh, we're waiting on the big boat. 
John Cherokee or something like that. For them, good American, Shani. <laughs> and they sang back a version of Little Liza Jane to us <laughs> from the minstrel bands that had toured on that coast in the 1850s. Wow. <laughs> that repertoire has been held on to there. Of course, those guys ended up going on to become the fishermen's friends, sang for the Queen, and, uh, but were inspired to sing shanties by our short <laughs> 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 Kind of cool. Uh, but there, you know, there's an incredible example of these people on the coast of Cornwall having a repertoire from that minstrel tradition. Those bands traveled all over Europe. Uh, it was it was the pop music of the day. And uh, pretty amazing stuff. So, uh, Jeff, can I ask a question? Yeah. So, the minstrel, the white composers yeah. took it the idea of right. style from black singers, right? Yeah. It became the minstrel show, and then white singers took that and turned it into British singers, took it into something else. But at the same time, the original black tradition was going on, but they must have also been influenced by the minstrel songs you were mentioning that earlier. I think, so an, an, well, I think, yeah, I, I think that interesting there's, back and forth. I think that when you start to look at the material that shows up in the shanties, that it's really hard to parse whether that's coming from black men who are singing it from minstrel songs, or you know their, their versions of songs that became minstrelized, right. or not. Yeah, but uh, yeah, there's a there's a really strange mix in there. Uh, we, the the term we came up with earlier before coming up here was that there was this. It's, it's a little like the, the melting pot, but this this pool, and you know, you throw in ingredients into it, and it's just that mix is a very curious one. And, stone and, soup. Stone soup. Stone soup. Yeah, <laughs> right. Uh, the more you add, the better it gets. Actually, <laughs> uh, but that that's part of the the idea behind this workshop is to inspire all of you to be thinking about this and looking at these different songs that you may be singing and saying, oh, okay, that seems like it might come. And if you can then find any, uh, figure out where you sourced it from and go back to see what they said about it or what other people might have said about versions of the song that they have, then it gets more and more interesting as we go. Meanwhile, we got some other obviously really good singers in this crowd who haven't sung enough, so who wants to lead out something? Just, it doesn't have to be in this repertoire. It could be something else. <laughs> hey, I'm kind of looking back at this end of the room. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, yes, Heather. Um, I did Fado Rango, which has most of them tune for. And it's developed over the years, fire over radio, fire M away, but the M wasn't going to go. So, lift him up and carry him along. Fire over go, fire over Nancy Blair, out for South Australia. 
you'd very quickly figure out that you needed to follow that beat, keep the beat, or everybody would be falling all over. <laughs> so it's a ex wonderful example of how, you know, when we're singing these things on stage, uh, we'll do a lot of things that kind of dress them up for the for for our ear. But uh, when you when you actually apply them to the work, it's a different phenomenon. But that was a wonderful example. And it brought up the bull time, which I'm very happy to be a little parse. Uh, how about down here? We got, we got a song you'd like to sing? Oh, the hog eyed man is the man for me, and he comes sailing over the sea with the hog eyed rail. Now you can hog eye, row ashore with the hog eye. Oh, the wild hog eyed man. In San Francisco, there she'll wait till the hog eyed man comes through her gate with the hog eyed rail. Now you can hog eye, row ashore with the hog eye. Oh, the wild hog eyed man. Sarah Jane with a hog eye, railroad manny with a hog eye, road shore with a hog eye, oh, what's a hog eye man? Lots of uh, lyric in there that suggests where it's coming from. Uh, you, want to, you, you want to explain what a hog eye is in San Francisco? And well, it's, I mean, it's a bunch of different things. But there's a bunch of, yeah. Word things that that word might reference, but in particular, a version of boat that is used in for as a cargo vessel in San Francisco. And we'll leave it at that. <laughs> um, I forgot to mention uh, Steamboat and Days and the songs that are coming out of the uh, the men who are involved in that trade. So uh, this wonderful book uh, is another one that is. Um, so Mary Wheeler's Steamboat and Days, uh, worth getting out of the library or finding it somewhere. Uh, interesting, though, that most of the songs in here are fragments. There's maybe two verses. So it brings up the idea, too, that those of us who love to sing this material might come across a piece that just is too luscious to leave alone. And people will make up more verses to it. And or find other verses that fit, and uh, so one of the ones that you know, come love come has two verses in there. But you guys extended that, right? Maggie had that song, so I don't know where quite where she got it from. Oh. I had to look back at my notes on that. Uh, Jeff, but to be fair, if you're singing a shanty, you have to sing it till the work is done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're adding verses. So this is traditional. Yeah, to extend, to, yeah. To, to make up more verses to yeah. a printed version that you found in a book from the, a text that comes from a hundred and some years ago. Well, I don't yes. know if that was Could a work I? song either, definitely. Um, I'm not sure how it was used. Well, no, I, actually, I'm not sure either. Yeah. I'm going to have to go back to my copy of that. Mm -hmm. Of course, the version I do out of, out of that is, uh, which Craig first wrote to us was I have read. Um, and interesting, I did look at that, and it's written in very straight tempo in there, but I like to do it a little differently. comes out of those barrier islands down south 
uh, the Georgia Sea Islands in particular, uh, uh, and we have uh, Georgia Sea Island singers coming to Sea Music Festival. And, uh, in June, six through nine. Before that? January. And January 5th, we have the Shanty Blast to raise money. So come on up and sing your brains out for four hours in the German club. And uh, so, but coming from the, uh, from the uh, Georgia Sea Island singers would be this, which has been covered by the boss. So I guess, you know, <laughs> gotten out into the popular realm. Thank you all for coming out. Thank you. Thank you.